Yo, what up Street Dogs, Eric Kim. All right, the thought. This one is on the hacker ethos. So, you know, just a little bit about myself and my life story. So, for me growing up, I was actually pretty, grew up pretty poor. I mean, single working mom, dad is kind of like a degenerate, de uh, deadbeat, whatever. And I didn't grow up in like uber extreme poverty, but you know, essentially poor enough where um, it's okay. Nice doggy. <laughs> He's like, I want to play. <laughs> um, bud, go back to mommy. <laughs> um, so essentially, it was, a. Uh, you know, I kind of grew up in a situation where, you know, just, uh, you know, didn't have any money and stuff like that. And actually, as a kid, you know, computers were the best thing ever in the internet and stuff like that. And for me, um, you know, I was born in 1988 and I still remember my first computer. It was an Acer, Aspire, you know, Pentium, MMX technology. I had like a one gigabyte hard drive and it had a 30... 8.8k modem, you know, did the whole AOL, net zero thing, whatever. And for me, the reason why this was so great being a kid is that, you know, when you're a kid, you don't got no money, you can't, you know. And then even from a young age, I tried to get a job, but, you know, typically no one hires 12 year olds to do work, and so it's hard to get paid. And so, you know, I'll, in the early days, you know, I was definitely an internet pirate. I'm um, like 12 years old. I've always figured out able to use the AOL Wares, W A R E Z. You know, figured out all the WinRAR stuff, and I still remember pirating my first version of Grand Theft Auto, like the original Grand Theft Auto, the POV, like super basic stuff. And it was so freaking complicated to do. And uh, actually, you know, down the line at UCLA, I was. Um, I worked at the UCLA undergraduate admissions. I worked in IT and stuff like that. And actually, like, even for myself, I'm actually pretty good with computers and IT and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how to code or anything like that or program, but I know enough HTML and basic stuff in CSS to just kind of get me by. And so for me, it was more of like, not knowing technology for the sake of technology, but you had a certain desired outcome and you wanted to hack, modify, and change things to make it the, the, the way you wanted to become. And so even with technology, my personal ethos is give the maximum amount of optionality and control and customization to the user and to really empower the user. And so, so for example, Google these, uh, sneaky bastards right like i mean i'm 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 technically pro google and pro these big tech companies whatever but you know if you work on if you work at google on the chrome team or whatever i think it's fine that you create these options to just like automatically opt the average user into doing x y and z but to me like at least give the user the option to disable stuff that you might find uh, annoying. So for example, I think it's fine that, you know, Google collects, you know, data in order to serve you more accurate ads. I think that's, that's fine. That's their business, right? But I think that Google, you know, just let my suggestion is just enable that by default, right? And, but at least give the user the option to D list themselves and then the funny thing is that there's not really going to be a huge financial backlash because the average user doesn't really care or whatever but then at least let the the power users the, give them the ability to um opt out so like even one thing i found so annoying with you know i'm like i love google maps and i think it's essentially the killer app for android or google or whatever but i always hated that every time i you know do uh any kind of trip at the end, there's always that annoying like, oh, please rate your your trip. And then there's like a bunch of different happy faces from sad to happy. And then I, I haven't really figured out a way to disable this. And, you know, even though Google Maps, um, uh, Google Maps is like amazing. I'm like, fuck, should I just get like, <laughs> just get an iPhone so, so I could just use Google uh, Apple Maps so I don't have to be, 
you know, annoyingly poked by these kind of, uh, you know, prompts. And I, I haven't figured out a way to disable it yet, but maybe I'll just kind of poke around a little bit more. But anyways, and so for me, to empower the user is give them maximum amount of customization, minimal amount of annoyances, whatever. And certainly like, at the end of the day, we all know it's a business and people got to make money, whatever. But still, let us try to give more optionality, more control and power to uh, the, the users. And so my notion of the hacker ethos is kind of like this attitude or this approach or this general gist or notion where it's far more interesting to be a hacker, a modifier, um, somebody who could poke around and change things than somebody who's just kind of given a one, one fit uh, one shoe fits all solution or was it one size fits all so it's it's kind of essentially going beyond the whole like one size fits all uh, philosophy and it's kind of giving more bespoke or customized or tailored solutions for the user and so I mean certainly this is all subjective at the end of the day but for me like I know certain things which annoy me and so I think maybe part of like design ethics or computer ethics or whatever is just do not annoy the users as you don't want others to annoy you and this is the thing I find hilarious you know all these people working at Google and you know engineers stuff like that just look at what Google Chrome plugins they have. So for example, it seems most Google programmers that I know or people who work at Google, whatever, everyone has freaking ad block installed, right? So it's like, this is, this is, and then they have like the disconnect and the anti-tracking stuff for themselves. So I find this hugely strange and bizarre because I'm like, yo, if your whole business is about serving ads, yet the programmers or the people working at Google are using ad blockers. I'm like, hmm, this is kind of funny and weird. Um, and even when I was a, a student, all my, all my friends who later became programmers at Google or whatever, we all had all the ad blockers and all the stupid tracking blockers and shit enabled. So it's, it's hugely contradictory and I think it's essentially it's bad form where once again and another thing too right is I don't know any person who works at Google who would genuinely prefer to um, to hello uh, I don't know any person at Google who works there who genuinely prefers having a Google Pixel phone or an Android phone over an iPhone Except maybe like, let's say, a handful of my friends. It looks like most people who work at um, Google, you know, they give you the Chromebook or the Pixel book and they give you a Google Pixel and then use that stuff during your business meetings. But in private, you'd actually prefer to use your MacBook Pro or use your iPhone or iPhone Pro or whatever. So once again, there's this kind of... I, I just think people should just be more honest and, uh, and there's also some sort of like... Um, commentary on the new, uh, you know, Apple work from home commercial or something. And then it's like, everyone's using, you know, FaceTime and pretending to do business. I'm like, dude, ain't nobody using FaceTime. Everyone's using Zoom. And so you're kind of giving people this fake warped reality of what's kind of really going on. And, you know, I kind of get it because Apple's a business. They need to promote their own products. But it seems like everyone's kind of doing it in this strange, uh, disingenuous way.